While the iPad Air has yet to take over as my main computer, it has become an excellent secondary device for me. It complements my current workflows and productivity in meaningful ways, and some apps on here are truly incredible. So I thought I'd share with you some of my favorite apps that I use on a daily basis, and some other apps as well, which I really think are just great. Let's get into it. I can't not start this video with Lightroom CC. It single-handedly made me use the iPad more than ever before, and it remains my favorite app of all time for the iPad. Lightroom started as a desktop piece of photo editing software, but it's transitioned really well to the iPad. Most of the tools that you need are here, and for me, it's easily the most enjoyable way to edit photos. The best feature, in my opinion, is the cloud backup. Everything you do on here is saved to the cloud, so that's any photos you import, edits you make, and even presets you develop. They all sync across all your devices. That means wherever I open this app, laptop, mobile, iPad, everything is just where I left it, and I can edit and export photos regardless of where I am. For someone who changes phones often for review, this is a really wonderful feature to have. The mobile or CC version as it's called on here does get a lot of stick from legacy users and I get it. No, it doesn't have all the features the desktop app has and it's not going to suit everybody. And even I'll admit if I'm shooting for a client and I know there's gonna be hundreds or if not thousands of photos, I'll still fire up my PC and the classic version. But for all of my personal photos, anything I do on Instagram and more importantly for anything I do here on the channel, I use Lightroom CC either through my iPhone, the iPad or any desktop or other device I'm using at the moment. I've enjoyed using it so much I actually made a video about it so I will link that in the description and I'll pop it up here too but I found it to be the most enjoyable way to edit photos on the go. App number two has got to be Pinterest. No, it's not just for planning weddings and getting ideas for kitchens, although it is good at that. It's managed to rise to be one of my favorite apps recently and that's because it's an utterly excellent place to go for stealing ideas. I mean getting inspiration. Now that I work freelance, I'm often looking for ideas and inspiration for projects I'm working on, whether that's graphic design layouts, photography ideas or edits, or even just color themes. Pinterest has it all. Not to mention, it's a beautiful place to just scroll. I find so many things on here inspiring that I often leave the app wanting to make things, which is always a good feeling to have. I actually use this app a lot just to get an idea of themes and styles of videos I want to make for this channel. And I know a few of you have asked if you can follow the Byte Review board, so I will link that in the description if you want to follow along below. I always thought I'd move past the built-in notes app on the iPad, but the truth is it's really quite good and I think for a lot of people it does just enough to be the main app for just that. I use notes for lots of different reasons, whether it's for video shot lists, small thoughts, or just for work, and it's relatively basic in its setup with a simple folder system, but there's some good features for sharing and great Apple Pencil support, which has just kept me coming back to it. Recently, with the addition of Scribble for iPadOS, Notes and writing on the iPad in general has become way more powerful. In Notes specifically, you can now draw certain things by holding down the pencil, so a drawn line can now snap to a straight one, arrows can look much nicer, and you can even draw little things like stars and circles. A favorite feature of mine is being able to highlight handwriting and to paste it as standard text, which is very cool if you want to pop your thoughts into a Word document or an email. And it even works with my less than stellar handwriting too, which is nice. My only gripe is I'm a cross-platform user, so while I can see the notes on my MacBook if I just open up the Notes app, I actually use a Windows PC just as much, if not more, and to see those notes, I'm going to need my iPad on me. So I am tempted to move to something which is a lot more cross-platform, like Microsoft OneNote comes to mind, but I haven't checked it out yet, and that Notion app seems good too, but if you guys have got any recommendations, then pop them in the comments below and I'll check them out. This is actually the main reason I never got into Notability. I know it's one of the best note-taking apps on the iPad and you can get an app for it on the Mac, but because you can't get it on Windows, it's a bit of a no-go for me. If you edit video in any form, for fun or for work, then you simply have to check out LumaFusion for the iPad. It's a little more expensive than other apps on this list, but it's the closest thing you can currently get to Final Cut or Premiere Pro in iPad form. And for the most part, it's got everything you need to edit video to your heart's content. There's all the tools you would expect to see here from a modern piece of editing software, and there's good support for LUTs and color grading too. 
While I really like the app and I think it's pretty excellent on the iPad Pro, I still personally use Premiere Pro for everything I do, although I can see how someone might transition over to LumaFusion and just use that. In fact, maybe that's something I could check out in a future video, so do subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on that one. Another shout out has to go to Procreate on the iPad. Now, I don't want to lie to you, I don't use Procreate that much because my skill set isn't quite there with it, but I know from friends and others that it's an amazing piece of software for creatives. I've seen people put together amazing pieces of digital art on here, from tattoos to brand designs, and if you watch any YouTube channels based around drawing on the iPad, Procreate is always front and center. Suffice to say, if you want to draw on the iPad or want to get into digital art and start learning how things like layers work, Procreate really is the way to go. To round us off, I'd be remiss not to mention Google's workspace, formerly the G Suite, because despite it not being an overly exciting set of apps, it's actually a really good place just to get your work done, and I use it a huge amount. This mainly comes across from using Google Docs to write my scripts. It's a pretty brass tacks word processor with some great options for collaboration, but I mainly use it because it stays backed up to the cloud, meaning wherever I open Google Docs and on whatever device, I can just carry on where I left off, and I really value that. Sometimes I have nuggets of information hit me or a specific thing I want to say pops into my head, so it's really useful just opening it on my phone and just writing it down regardless of what situation I'm in. I use the other apps like Slides and Sheets a lot less, but it's nice that they're here and it's nice that they're backed up too. Oh, and here's a tip as well. If you're trying your best to stay consistent with your YouTube thumbnails, throwing them on a Slides document is a great way to keep track of them and look back over the ones that you used to really like. Uh, thanks to Patrick T for that tip. So that rounds up this video on my favorite apps for the iPad Air and the ones that I've been using the most recently. If you guys have got any suggestions for a notes app, then let me know in the comments below so I can go and check that out. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel as well. It helps me out massively. It helps the channel grow. And more importantly, it means I can keep making videos like this one. Hit the like button on the way out too. That would be massive. And I'll see you all in the next one.